Hello and welcome to the talk. My name is Martin Plaval and I'll tell you something about operational theories of the harmonic oscillator. There are two facets of classical and quantum theory that we usually work with. There is the finite dimensional information theory where we usually investigate steering and bell inequalities. And then there is the physical theory with position, momentum and Hamiltonians where we investigate physical properties such as tunneling. And then there are GPTs. GPTs are a class of convex operational theories and the main idea can be characterized as follows. We all know that a set of states for qubits is a block sphere. So what if block sphere wouldn't be a sphere, but it would be a cube? Such questions were heavily investigated in the field of GPTs, and you can find two review articles in the video description. In GPTs, most of the research is carried out within the finite dimensional information theory, where information theoretic effects such as steering and bell inequalities are investigated. In our work, we introduce the second aspect to GPTs and we formulate the toy model of the harmonic oscillator. So why should you care if you're not a GPT person? Well, first of all, this construction gives completely operational alternative to quantization without referring to any operator frameworks, because in GPTs we don't have any operators, we only have a operational formalism on phase space. But also studying GPTs gives us a better understanding of quantum theory because we look at quantum theory from the outside and we can compare it to other theories, we can compare it to classical theory, we see the differences, we also see the similarities. And for these reasons, I think that it's worthwhile to study GPTs. To construct GPTs with position and momentum, we first introduce position Q and momentum P as the real numbers. The state of our theory will be given by pseudo-probability densities. That means that they will be given by functions of position and momentum. These functions can be negative, but we, if we integrate them over all positions and momentum, we should give one. And this is just some normalization condition. Then we postulate that we will predict the probability of observing position of the particle or of, or of the system to be from some interval E by integrating over all momentums, but only integrating over some positions from the interval E. And similarly, one can uh, write similar postulate for predicting probabilities of observing momentum from some interval. Given something like uh, Hamiltonian, so some function that represents the energy of the system, we postulate that we can compute the mean value of uh, the system simply by integrating the Hamiltonian against the pseudo-probability density. Although I said that uh, we postulate these things, they are not uh, unfounded, but we can uh, find this in uh, quantum theory, because one can uh, reformulate quantum theory using the so-called Wigner functions, and then uh, these Wigner functions, they satisfy all of these postulates, and in fact, we compute the mean values by integrating uh, Hamilton functions against the Wigner function. One can also formulate classical theory based on Hamilton mechanics in the following framework. So, although we introduce some postulates, they are general enough that they include uh, classical and quantum mechanics. But now there's a problem, because although we can compute the mean value of energy easily, we don't have a rule to computing the probability of observing energy from some interval. This is extremely important because mean value is very limited information about energy, and we want to get those probabilities because we want to be able to characterize eigenstates, and we want to be able to characterize eigenstates to get spectrum of the harmonic oscillator, because we can get physical properties of the harmonic oscillator from the spectrum, not from the mean values which means that we want to have a rule for computing these probabilities of energy being from some interval. Before I tell you how to solve this problem, I tell you two things that do not work. First one is to observe that, uh, that instead of computing uh, probabilities of energy being from some interval, we can also compute these higher moments of the energy distributions, So, which would be something like mean value of energy to the power of n. And these two things are, in fact, uh, equivalent, and this is somehow intuitive because we know that if I would be able to compute the mean value of energy squared, then I can already compute the variance of the probability distribution of energy given by the certain state, and I can already say whether something is or is not an eigenstate. So these higher moments, they are equivalent to computing the probabilities, and then one can say, like, why don't you just compute this by integrating the nth power of Hamiltonian against the state? Well, the reason is that this doesn't even work in, in quantum theory. And in fact, uh, postulating such a rule for higher moments would probably uh, uniquely characterize a classical harmonic oscillator. A second try is that uh, we can define energy as an independent variable, but uh, we abandon this approach because we all know that energy is not an independent variable. Energy is a function of position and momentum. And so we should not treat it as an independent variable if we can avoid it. 
And the solution that we deem correct and that we uh, use to construct the toy model of the harmonic oscillator is the phase space spectral measure. The phase space spectral measure is an operational replacement for the spectral measure of operator. And it is intuitive why we need this, because remember back to quantum theory, we need to diagonalize the Hamiltonian to find the spectral measure of the Hamilton's operator to predict the spectrum of possible energies. And so to do this in general, we need some operational replacement for the spectral measure of operator. And we deem this replacement the phase space spectral measure. One can characterize what is a phase space spectral measure. It's given by some set of functions and how to compute the probabilities from this. If you are interested how to construct the phase space spectral measure and how to compute probabilities from it, then please uh, see the article. It's going to be linked in the description. Now, so what do we get? What is the toy model that we construct? The, the toy model that we constructed is best characterized by this figure. In this figure, there are several functions, so let's uh, break them down. So let's look at them one by one. The first one is the blue one, and this is uh, uh, operational equivalent of a projector. This is a part of the phase space spectral measure of uh, the Hamiltonian, and uh, this corresponds to energy equals zero. This already shows that the ground state of our harmonic oscillator is going to have energy exactly equal to zero. Then this green one, this is the part of the phase space spectral measure. This is the operational projector corresponding to energy h bar omega half. So this is the operational equivalent of the projector on the first excited state. And we can already see from this that uh, the spectrum of the energies is going to be discrete, just like it is for the quantum harmonic oscillator. The green function is uh, another operational projector in the phase space spectral measure. The brown function actually represents a state of our theory. And this, the interesting aspect of the state is that it has a negative uh, uh, pseudo probability density, which you can see that this function is negative. And this is important because this shows that uh, there are equivalents of negative Wigner functions in our toy model. Also, one can see that this state is an eigenstate of energy. Then there's this purple state, which is, although it is given by a positive uh, function, it has non-classical properties because as we show in the paper, the state has tunneling properties. This basically means that the potential energy of the state is not upper bounded by the total energy. And so this is the toy model of the harmonic oscillator that we construct. And you can read more about how to, for example, compute energies from the phase space spectral measure and what it actually is in the paper. It's going to be linked in the description. Now, I would like to say that uh, this is an exciting time because uh, constructing this toy model opens up two very important branches of further research in GPTs. The first one is to construct a well-defined theory of hydrogen atom. And the obstacle to do this is to get a good enough generalization of uh, uh, time evolution. This is because time evolution for the harmonic oscillator is in some sense simple, while time evolution for the hydrogen atom is more complicated and there are quantum corrections and one have to uh, generalize and discover how to deal with this in an operational manner. Another future branch of research, which I find even more exciting, is to construct field theory using this harmonic oscillator or using some other toy model of harmonic oscillator. This is because uh, this harmonic oscillator has zero ground state, but discrete energy spectrum, which is somewhere between classical and quantum. So it can have very exciting and very interesting properties. Also, one can take other toy models of harmonic oscillator, for example, ones that don't have equidistant spectrum. And so then one can construct a field theory without photons or maybe field theories with other very exciting and very exotic properties. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. If you enjoyed the presentation, please like the video. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.